If you are familiar with vector displacement brushes, you might be wondering if 3D Coat also offers this feature. The short answer is no. There are currently no vector displacement brushes in the application, but that is in large part because there are tools in 3D Coat that either mimic or outright replace the functionality of vector displacement brushes, and that's what we will explore in this video. As many of you already know, the brush alphas in 3D Coat are grayscale. And when working with grayscale brush alphas or displacement maps, the extrusion direction is along the surface normal only, whereas vector displacement will allow the artist to extrude along different vectors and to the point where it can even extrude back toward the original surface. This enables the creation of overhanging parts such as curved horns or teeth, dragon scales, and so on. In order to help illustrate this point, I will select a grayscale brush alpha of an ear, and then I will choose a stamp draw mode from the E panel in order to make the extrusion. In a sculpt tree panel, I will hide the ears layer and now begin to make the extrusion by clicking and dragging while rotating to orient the object properly. We can now clearly see the limitation of grayscale brush alphas. They provide no undercuts needed for objects of this type. I will go ahead and undo. And then we want to now explore a better solution than a grayscale brush alpha. And for that, we want to select a model from the Sculpt Models palette. What this will do is bring up the Import tool, and we have an option to choose On Brush. Before I do that, I want to demonstrate a problem example to be aware of. I will switch to a separate subfolder and select a different ear model, something like this. I'm going to hide the body, the eyes. I can click Auto Scale, and I just want to show that this object, even though it's placed at the origin of the grid, it still may be a little bit unwieldy when trying to use this as a brush. I'll show what I mean by first unhiding the body layer. When you click on an object here in the Sculpt Models palette, it will immediately switch to the Import tool. I next want to click the On Brush button. In this example, straight away, we can clearly see that we have a bit of a problem here because this ear object is not properly oriented. We can make some modifications in the Tool Options panel in order to correct this, uh, but that's time consuming and a bit annoying to have to go through all this. So uh, let's set everything back. And I wanted to show how you would set up your object in order to have it ready to use as a brush without this particular problem. So what we will do now is click the transform button. And again, I will hide the body so it's not obscuring our view. And I may want to subdivide it a time or two before I commit it to the scene. I'm also going to scale it just a little bit. At this stage, it is just a preview object until I hit the Enter key or the Apply button. Next, I want to rotate this object to where it is pointing upward in the Y axis. And I'm going to turn on the axis handles. There are two ways of doing this. I can come to the Tool Options panel. I know I want to rotate around the X axis, so I will enter negative 90. So as a general rule of thumb, I want the right side of the object to be pointing down the positive side of the x-axis and the bottom portion to be pointing down the positive side of the z-axis. Now when we try to use this as a brush, our object will be oriented properly. Okay, we are almost done, but we have two small steps to finish before we can use this model as a brush. In this case, I'm going to add it to a folder that I've created just for ears. So I'm going to create a new blank layer. Let's say ear test one. Okay. Now let's hit apply or the enter key to commit this preview object to the current layer. 
I'll click yes. Okay. It has a default shader applied to it, but I'll choose a different one. I can now move my cursor to the right side of the layer. When I see the move icon, I can click and drag it into the model's palette. Here, we have the option to decimate it beforehand. If you don't want to decimate, just click this. We can drag this slider back and forth to adjust the value. I want to decimate it down to about 20,000 or less. The reason for this is because, as I will show later, you can actually use this as a freeform primitive. Thus, we need to keep the poly count much lower than we would normally. One little side note is that the object will adopt the name of the layer when you store it to the model's palette. Now, should you not like the resulting thumbnail that was created in the sculpt model's palette, to fix it, all we need to do is reposition the model in the viewport to get the view that we would like. And that is what 3D Coat will use in order to create the new thumbnail. Okay, so let's do it again. Drag and drop. Okay. Easy enough. Okay, so I can delete that one. Yep. And now that we have our ears already created and ready to utilize, I can go back to the body. I'm going to turn wireframe off. I'll select the body. And I want to mention this works best when you are in voxel mode, but it will also work in surface mode as well. When working with a surface mesh, the density will impact the performance somewhat. So it's not too bad here. It's kind of a medium high, not too dense. So I'll turn wireframe back off and I'm just going to select my object that I recently created and choose on brush. And now I'm able to move it around the surface of the model as if it were a real brush. I have a 3D connection device so I can actually rotate my model or rotate my view while I'm placing this. Now, if you don't have a 3D connection device, another way that you can rotate the object, just like you would a regular brush, is to use the nine and the zero key on your keyboard. And just as you would with a normal brush, you can right click and drag left and right to scale your brush, use bracket keys, or the touch ring on your Wacom stylus. If the object is embedded too far, or maybe it's offset too far, we can adjust that also by right clicking and dragging up and down. With the standard brush draw mode in the E panel, you can simply left mouse click on the model in order to apply it. With a stamp draw mode, you can always click where the center will be and then drag away from the center or rotate around the center to scale and rotate on the fly. If we notice any Boolean or performance issues with surface mode, we can always switch to voxel mode. What I'm going to do is create a duplicate of this and hide the original. And I'll click the S icon to go into voxel mode and hit OK. Then select a model from the Sculpt Models palette again. I will once more select the Stamp Draw mode from the E panel. One of the first things you'll notice is just how fluid voxel mode is in comparison to surface mode. And it will merge with the underlying object very cleanly and without any problems. Whereas in surface mode, that may not always be the case. And as you can see, it merged instantly with a model beneath it. So I think you'll find this works in a manner that's almost identical to working with a vector displacement brush. In the next one, we are going to resume by looking at another tool that is somewhat similar, but it gives us much more control when we want to shape the model as we apply it to the underlying mesh. Okay, so stay tuned and thank you for watching.